let's talk about the PCSK9 inhibitors. We've talked around them, we discussed them, we talked about the research, now let's talk about them out there in the real world. You've had experience using them, yes? Absolutely. And tell me about your experience. Well, you've heard some of my frustrations. Uh, Not the insurance experience. Okay. Tell me about the medical experience. Uh, medically, they're, they're incredible drugs. They, they do exactly what Fourier showed. They lower LDL you know, 60, 70 percent on top of maximally tolerated statin therapies. They're incredibly well tolerated. Uh, from an injection site reaction standpoint, it's r really, really rare to have somebody with a, a, a problem even. Uh, and um, they, they're a wonderful solution. Now, I, I have a question from something you said earlier that you kind of picked 70 as your target goal in secondary prevention. Is, did oh, I, yeah, but uh, I think it should be much lower than that. Okay. So, so that's just the, the most commonly utilized years. number uh, across the board in the international. Is that number out there because that's all you could get? What, what's that? Was that 70? I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think because it was. I th I th the reason I asked I that is I think the evidence shows that this is a linear relationship. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, why it, not 20? Why not 30? It, it why should not be 30. 40? It, it was should stepwise. Be 30. I yeah. agree with People, you. People, okay. they did arbitrary numbers, yeah, yeah. and that was about where we could go. Yeah. And so in Prove It, a few other st studies, they looked at 70 versus 100. Mm -hmm. But in that study as well, they looked at 50 versus 70. And that was the mm -hmm. first time 50 reared its head. And then from then on, the people that were really looking to do the best we could said 70 is yesterday, 50 is where we're going, and now 30 is the number. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's what you're born yeah. with. So we were retreating to natal cholesterol levels. See, yeah. I told you 30 would come back up. I knew <laughs> that. <it did>. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, right now, who are the appropriate patients for, for these uh, PCSK9 inhibitors? I think, I think it should be on label. I think it should be people with clinical ASCVD or heterozygous FH on maximally tolerated statin therapies who require a greater reduction in LDL cholesterol, or in the case of evolocumab, homozygous FH as well. So uh, if you follow the PI, that's who should be on the drugs. So what, is your, what, what problems do you have in people with ASCVD? I know with us, we have people who say, well, wait, 90 isn't too high, because all you gotta do is be below 100, right? And that's what's, and one of the companies will go nameless, wants it to be up over 130. Yeah, I've seen that as well. But right. 130 was eight years ago. Right. Exactly years ago. correct. A, a, 130 is a number that's okay if you have no coronary disease and just have one risk factor. By the way, is it okay? Is it okay? Not for, no, was okay then. Yeah. No, as far as I'm concerned, it never was. Okay. But good question. <laughs> um, no, seriously. I, I think that it's, and they will use that as a number, and that's the most infuriating in that you don't know what, what they want and in your mind, because the FDA says, we'll let you guys slug it out, right? And, and what's not done is you're, the industry should have come up with an agreement that says, we don't, we're not going to go with 70, but we're going to give you 80 or 85. And then we have dialogues after that. Instead, each company has its own number, which says that you guys are making up your own rules. Uh, I actually, you know, so I would disagree with you. I, I, the first time I would disagree with you. Oh, my. Yeah, uh, well, because I think that uh, th they shouldn't have agreed upon a, higher no a number higher than 70, you know, with all the data we have. We should be able to treat our patients according to the PI okay. in, in, in their best interest. Let me ask a couple of provocative yeah. questions, oh. then I want to go on to some payer questions. Yeah. Just in terms of medicine, if everybody should be 70, or now you can get down to 30, and all comers come into your office, and you know that there's no threshold. I'm not at high risk by lifestyle or family history, and my LDL cholesterol is 90. Why not put me on a statin? Why not put me on a, a, a PCSK9 inhibitor and get me down to 20 right now? There's an indication. Well, first of all, it depends. And that's going to break his bank. Okay, no, for, it depends who you are, how old you are, uh, you know, what your family history is. Uh, and then some of us do subclinical testing. We do coronary CTs there it is. And, uh, and see whether you have a disease. All right. If you have no disease and you're 67 years old uh, and you're a man and uh, your LDL is 90, I would not put you on a stand. It's a, it's a get out of jail free card. Yeah. Okay, and one last question. But you all we, were, were extraordinarily happy with the side effect profile of these drugs. How much experience do we really have to know? that 10 or 15 years down the line, there's not going to be something. We don't know that. Okay, it's just fair to, to put that out sure. there. You can never know that, but, but from an LDL standpoint, I would say that having an LDL of 30, there is enough evidence from Mendelian randomization studies 
with PCSK9 loss of function mutations that these people have LDLs of 14 or 15 for their entire lives and they don't have any problems. Okay. And that other, being said, other I mean, that, that's, well. that's a little tricky to do because there may be other random well, mutations these, in there as well. But, that but being I mean, said, this is, a, you know, the, the PCSK9 inhibitor is mimicking, in I a sense, it. right, the absence right. of PCSK9. Well, what he's saying is there may be other genetic abnormalities that, that are protect associated them that you haven't from the, the PCSK9, right. of, which so, I can understand. Well, now, let's, that, that, let's okay. talk about coverage criteria. Now that we've put this down, we can establish the following truths. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Self yes. And these truths are, you can get the LDL cholesterol down, lower LDL cholesterols are associated with lower heart disease risk and other cardiovascular risks, and the drugs have a good side effect profile that is to say virtually none other than injection site issues. Okay, we'll put that on the table. Everybody will accept this. We can move forward. What are the coverage criteria? How are you gonna cover this drug? Well, the coverage criteria is basically the FDA, to the FDA label. Despite mm -hmm. okay. what experiences you may have had, um, well, it's great to hear you say that. I I, say. You know, again, I, I think the two of you maybe need to screen your patients to find out what insurance companies they have. And <laughs> We're not that. We, <laughs> we don't have that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Have you guys evolved your policy on this? Not yet. Have you evolved? Has this changed? Have Has you it always been this after yesterday? No, 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 no. no, 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 no after? No. no, even in the last year and a half that the drugs have been available. I think we've always covered it to well, label. Because some of the companies came out very strict and they relaxed a little bit over the year and a half they've been out. Mm. That's mm. the reason I was asking. Mm. Now, what about step therapy and prior authorization for these drugs? Do you require step therapy first? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, well, so, and if so, what is it like and, and why? Sure, so um, consistent with, I think, what we see, first of all, for FH, it's genetic testing. It's consistent with the label for that. No, no, it's not. No, there's no genetic testing in the label. Genetic testing physician attestation is required for So there the is genetic testing. Oh, we, so we this is different than step therapy or prior authorization approval. So step therapy would say, first of all, our, our approvals are consistent with the FDA label. As far as coverage criteria, um, we do require that patients have had done done their attempts with lifestyle modifications as well as statin therapy. And we would like them to try two different statins before considering it a statin failure. Okay, so that is, that's a, a fairly uh, rigorous requirement. Well, yeah, let me ask a question yeah. about that. What, what if they have tried Crestor mm -hmm. and their maximal result is, excuse me, Resuvastatin, I okay. guess I should say on, on tape, uh, and, they, and they've had a you know, their, their start point is 200 and they're down to 100 mm -hmm. and they have FH and vascular disease. Do you require the use of another, of a different statin, even though Resuvastatin is the best uh, or most effective statin? No, at that point, I think uh, there is some request to see what the opportunities would be around azetamide therapy. And from that point. Which is not on the label, by the way. Yeah. So you're going to go for step therapy. I just heard this, this genetic testing word, which somebody yes. earlier in the broadcast said they didn't require, suddenly it pops up. Not required, right. requested. Has there been genetic testing done to confirm? What's the difference between age? requested and required? Okay. And, you know, what I mean, if I'm the answer is no to that? Do you, do you then say we would like genetic testing? No, there's a quest for LDL levels where we're looking at LDL levels right. to look at the fact that they haven't achieved their goals. By the on, way, on I, while you're asking these questions of mm -hmm. us, time is, is, is going out forward and, yeah. uh, and time is plaque in these individuals. Yeah. And so they're at risk for having an infarct or a stroke or dying mm -hmm. while this entire process is occurring. You know what, that's cogent because the curves separate yep. in the first six months yeah. in, in, right, in the study. So while we're waiting and having a back and forth, we could be doing something to, to reduce the likelihood of an event, statistically.